Let's discuss lung cancer, which is the number one killer of all cancers. It's definitely not the most common, that would be skin cancer, and there's other ones that are more common, but it is the most common cause of cancer death. And there's several different types of lung cancers, and we'll talk about the most common types in more depth. But one is called small cell, small cell carcinoma, and this is because histology-wise, when you look at it, the cells are really small. And this is about a quarter of all lung cancers, and it's the most aggressive. Um, there's really not a lung cancer that's a great prognosis. Um, they're all pretty deadly. And by the time we get to them, by the time you get symptoms, it's gone too far. We really don't have a good screening uh, process for the, for the lungs like we do maybe the colon or the breast or, or something like that. So um, one interesting thing about small cell carcinoma is it, it can be, it can cause a perineoplastic syndrome, which is pretty common with small cell carcinoma where it actually has ectopic hormone production. So ectopic means it's not from its normal location. For example, ADH, antidiuretic hormone, is typically secreted by the posterior pituitary gland. So if it's secreted by these neuroendocrine cells, of this small cell carcinoma within the lungs, that's an ectopic form of ADH. And what you see is you'll see hyponatremia because what ADH does is it causes the kidneys to reabsorb more water and it dilutes the blood and so you don't have as much sodium as you normally do. So that would be hyponatremia. And this is called syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, SIADH, that's coming from that neuroendocrine uh, tissue there. Also, it can release adrenocorticotropic hormone. This is typically released from the anterior pituitary gland, and it signals the adrenal gland to secrete cortisol. So if you have a lot of this being released, you're going to have a lot more cortisol than you need, and that can lead to Cushing syndrome, where you can have hyperglycemia, you can have hypertension, you can have uh, fat redistribution, like the Dowinger's hump, so that's some complications of that one. Another one's pretty interesting and still considered peroneoplastic syndrome is Lambert-Eaton syndrome. And this is where these small cell carcinoma cells can cause an uh, increase in antibodies that attack the uh, calcium channels at a nerve terminal of the neuromuscular junction. So if you have a motor neuron, it comes to the end where there's an axon terminal. You know, you have calcium channels there that they cause an influx of calcium with action potential, and that is what causes the, neuromus the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to be released into the neuromuscular junction, and then uh, it'll respond on the, on the muscle cell with nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So if you have a, a antibody that attacks those calcium channels, you don't get that neurotransmitter uh, release, and so you have muscle weakness, a lot of times in the legs and kind of proximal muscles. So that's called Lambert-Eaton syndrome. And that small cell carcinoma, it's really aggressive. Um, it's one of those that typically you can't cut out because they're small cells and they're distributed. So you really have to use chemotherapy in this situation. Um, there's some other ones that are all classified as non-small cell carcinomas. And these are the other three-fourths of lung cancers. And some that fall under this are large cell carcinoma. We're not gonna talk about that one much, but obviously it has larger cells, but it's a really small percentage. So we're going to look more at squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. So squamous cell carcinoma, it's up here in the black. A lot of times it's right there where at the hilum of the lung where kind of everything comes in. And that's where these tumors tend to accumulate. <clears throat> and this one's interesting too. It has a perineoplastic syndrome where it releases parathyroid hormone related peptide. So this acts just like parathyroid hormone. So what's it going to do? It's going to increase your um, calcium levels and cause hypercalcemia in the blood. So when you have hypercalcemia um, and you look at blood work and it doesn't show high PTH, then you might want to think this could be a perineoplastic syndrome of squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. And then another one is called adenocarcinoma. And this one's kind of unique because it's more on the periphery of the lung, so in an X-ray or a CT, you'll see it more on the outside of the lung. And this one, about 80 to 90 percent of lung cancers are associated with smoking. Smoking is kind of the cause of, of these. But if there's one that typically is a non-smoker, it's adenocarcinoma. 
So about two thirds of these uh, patients do smoke, but a good one third, a pretty good chunk of that is non-smokers. So associate non-smoking lung cancer with adenocarcinoma. And um, let's talk about the symptoms. So symptoms, you can have pulmonary symptoms like a lot of times a cough, uh, hemopsis, where you can cough up blood. Um, you can also have constitutional symptoms. This will be like unexplained weight loss, night sweats, um, fever, fatigue, malaise, these constitutional symptoms. Um, another key thing is compression. Depending on where the tumor is, it may compress on something. It could compress on the recurrent laryngeal nerve and cause hoarseness. It could be a, like a pancose tumor that um, actually compresses the cervical, uh, superior cervical ganglion. This can lead to what's called Horner syndrome, where the, you have ptosis of the eye where the eyelid drops. You can have meiosis where the, the, um, the, the pupils wide open. And you can also have anhydrosis where the face and around the eyes doesn't sweat. So that's Horner syndrome. And that could be caused by a tumor at the apex of the lung up here. And um, so you could also have, you know, you're close to the esophagus. So if you have some compression on the esophagus, maybe you have a, a squamous cell carcinoma, you'd have some dysphagia or difficulty swallowing. So uh, that's some of the symptoms you'd see. And again, the treatment is surgery, chemo radiation. If you feel like it's isolated somewhere and it's a good solid tumor, they might look at doing surgery. But um, you know, if it's something like a small cell carcinoma where it's just kind of distributed everywhere and there's small cells, Chemo, chemotherapy and radiation are, are more of the standard treatment there. So that is lung cancer, and I'll see you in the next one.